Let's talk about this front end, which needs sorting out. Now the four pilot leaf spring is actually two inches wide. This cross member will only accept a one and three quarter inch spring. So that has to go. The other th issue with it is, is it's actually mounted in front of the axle beam. And I want to, you know, the traditional Model A type setup where the spring is mounted above the axle because that will then position my wheels in the right place as opposed to at the moment there will be set back so I want to get the, the right obviously wheelbase. This anti-roll bar is no good either so I think I'm just going to chop all this off from there because the other thing I've got to do as well is split these wishbones so if I cut these off here chop it in the middle I'm hoping the wishbones will then be able to open up now let's look at the parts I've got to, to make all this work. New spring, one and three quarter inch wide. That came from Duxville, shop in the UK, and it does have reverse eyes. So that will just drop the front end a little bit, I think by an inch or so they say. Got these bits from Speedway in the States. Actually really good value for money, obviously a bit of shipping to the UK. To mount that spring then above the axle, I've got these spring perch, so that will replace the ones that are in there at the moment. And that's the bottom, which actually has a bracket there so you can mount a shock absorber. The, the bottom of the shock will go on there. And in here, oh, here's the shackles. So again, that is for a one and three quarter inch spring. So that's everything to, to go with the spring there to make that work, hopefully. I'm hoping that's going to fit with that axle, but until I get it all apart. Then when we come to split the wishbones, we've got this kit here, which these basically bungs weld in. And then you've got these tie rod ends which screw in. And then obviously the wishbones have to connect back to the chassis. So I've got these brackets and some bolts to hold the spring to the cross member. So hopefully this will all make the thing work. But first of all, let's cut the old stuff off the old front end. I'm just gonna cut these off either side. This whole front spring assembly will just drop off then. Not gonna be too precise because I'll grind it down and make it look pretty after, round it off, etc. So I'm just going to do a straight cut through there. There we have it. The old spring is removed. Wait a minute. That does weigh a ton. Get this out of the way. to leave it long because I can cut them both they need to be exactly the same length obviously so I've left a bit extra there that is them split they feel pretty solid I've just turned this axle upside down because I need to get these existing spring perch bolts out now these are notoriously difficult to come out there's whole YouTube videos just on getting these bolts out so it is my first time ever doing this I have soaked these overnight with some penetrating oil. I'm going to put some heat on here and try and get the nut off to start with. So let's see how I get on. And then um, most of the videos I've seen on this, you have to heat up the axle as well and then use an air hammer and push the bolt out. So let's give this a go.
these spring perch bolts are just whooping me. I just can't get the things out. I have tried heating them so many times, but I think also my air hammer is quite a cheap thing and it's just probably not up to the task of driving those out. So I did look online yesterday and some people were actually using SDS drills. I've got quite a chunky one here. So I've taken an old bit there and actually like chamfered it off, hopefully you can see that, into a point. So that will go on the end of the uh, spring perch bolt there. And I'm gonna give that a try anyway and uh, see if we have an enjoy with that. Well, that finally popped out. Basically, I just left the torch just going, just blasting away at it while I got on the drill. Yeah, that SDS drill, that's the baby. This thing is a beast. And I just knocked it out. Right, that's one. One more to go. What a palaver. This is actually a few days later, but I finally managed to get both these spring perch bolts out. It was an absolute nightmare. I got one out and the other one just would not budge. So I just kept soaking it for days and days. I had some other stuff on. So I came back today, heated it again. You have to get this axle hotter than the sun and keep bashing it. In the end, I used this thing, which is off my big concrete breaker and smashed it with a sledgehammer. So yeah, that broke it loose eventually, but it's been a nightmare. I just offered up the new perch bolts and they're super tight. So it doesn't feel too, too gummed up inside these holes, but I'm gonna just give it a quick clean out just so the, uh, the new perch bolts will uh, go in there nice and easily or a bit more easily. So I'm just using a scotch pad there wrapped around a, a drill bit just to give that a clean out. That feels much better in there now. It's amazing how well preserved actually that is inside. It's not pitted at all really. As you saw earlier, I split the wishbones really crudely just to get them apart. And now I want to trim them down to fit these bones. I'll just show you the bone again. This is the bung here and it fits in the end of the wishbone. So I need to trim these off. I've noticed actually one, one is actually slightly longer than the other. So I'm going to trim the shortest one first and then I'll trim the other one to match. I use my chop saw in the end to try and get a half decent square cut on the end. So that's the junk that's on the inside. And let's see if this bung is gonna go in. Oh yeah, pretty good. I think that's still not quite square, so I'm gonna get my grinder out. these ends cleaned up and I chamfered the ends so when I come to weld that around there I'll get a much sort of deeper weld but I'm gonna drill cut the holes as well into there uh, either side I might even do three and I can do a nice big plug weld so I'm just gonna mark how deep these go into the 
wishbone drill down from the top about halfway Got these ends pretty much prepared. I've actually gone for four holes all the way around there. I'm not sure if I explained the earlier, but the bung goes in and that has a tie rod end, which is gonna connect back to the, to the frame. I need to weld that on the end, but firstly, I think I'm gonna just tidy up the end of this. If you remember, I cut this off really roughly before. So I wanna round that off now and just pretty that all up. Let's see if we can get these bungs welded in the end of these wishbones now. I'm no welding expert, see how this is gonna go, turn out. I'm really more concerned about getting a good strong weld than it being pretty. I don't really wanna grind the welds down. I know a lot of people do grind the, the original welds down on these wishbones as well, but I'd rather see the welds and just have that you know, slightly stronger wishbone with the welds left as they are, clean everything up, ready to just try and uh, tack these. What I'm gonna do as well, I plan to tack these on both wishbones and then I'll probably weld a quarter around each time and keep swapping just so the whole thing doesn't get too hot. Because I'm just slightly worried about these bungs, if they go slightly egg shaped or something or they warp slightly that, the tie rod end won't screw into them, so yeah, I'm just going to take my time and let everything cool down. Given the wishbones and the axle a light coat of primer and black paint. I'm not too worried about giving this car a show quality paint job of course, it's going to be rough and ready the way I like it and also it's not really going to see any salted winter roads. I'm not going to be doing 10,000 miles a year in the car so I'm not super worried about layers and layers of paint quite pleased how these turned out couldn't help myself but just knocked the edges off the weld around there looks pretty good and super strong i've got all my speedway parts here spring perch bolts got a bit of uh, anti-seize uh, to put on those so hopefully if they ever do have to come out again, which I'm hoping not, I won't have all the hassle I had last time to get those out again. So let's uh, yeah, see if we can slap all this back together.
Got these spring perch bolts in place. I haven't tightened them up on the bottom just because I want a bit of wiggle room and just wondering if I've got the bottom part of it exactly right. I'll show you why. With the bottom part, which basically take the shock. So yeah, I haven't tightened those up yet because I'm not exactly sure which way around they're gonna go, etc. I did try and put the shackle in with the bush on the shackle, but it's quite tight. So I've had to just knock those bushes in with a little rubber mallet. Got a little bit of copper grease on there to help things along and stop any rust getting in there. So next job is to put the spring in and I have put the bushes into the spring already as well. So let's try and do that. Okay, this is the spring. The other thing as well, I haven't mentioned, but this spring is designed for a Model A. And my beam is actually wider than a Model A beam, so I'm just a bit worried that these might not actually work. But that seems to have gone in there pretty well. Let's see if this side fits. Yes. And that has gone in. Lovely. It's a lovely tight fit as well. Let's see if we can get this front suspension under the frame. See how it sits. It looks like it's going to be pretty high for now because there's obviously no weight of the engine, but we'll get it in position. Up a bit drop in there you go there you can see the locating pin from the leaf springs there it's come up into that little hole it looks pretty high at the moment i'm hoping the engine is going to put some weight on that and bring that down quite a lot next i'm just going to loosely put the u-bolts just so it holds it roughly in place i'm not going to tie anything up at the moment obviously the angle needs to come up a bit so the wishbones go close to the frame there with the brackets Going to put these tie rod ends in the wishbones next. Now, these obviously allow a bit of adjustment, and I need to get the at the angle of that front beam right. So I've put these locking nuts on. I'm going to screw them into there. So that gives me a bit of adjustment either way. If if they need to come out a little bit, I can wind them out a good sort of 20 or 30 mil, and there'll still be a decent amount of thread uh, in the wishbone. And obviously I tried to do them the same amount, so the brackets obviously need to go in the same place. Here's the tie rod end in the wishbone, and this is the bracket which either welds or can bolt, I think, to the frame. It's got four holes there. That fits on the tie rod there. I'm just gonna put this castle nut on there loosely for now and straight away, if I was to fix it on the outside of the frame, this bracket will probably have to come off, but I'm not quite sure what that bracket is. Uh, please leave a comment if you do know, I'm not sure whether it's a body mount, in which case possibly may need it again, depending on which body I use in the end. I'm not gonna mount these for now anyway, because I wanna get the weight of the engine on and see how it affects things. And also possibly someone suggested that I should weld these brackets to the inside of the frame and what that's doing is just keeping these wishbones in a little bit because it gives you more turning on the wheel i'll show you what i mean if you can imagine the wishbone was out here 
then you've only got this amount of wheel turn before it hits the wishbone. But if you can get the wishbone angled back in towards the body, you've got a lot more movement there for the wheel, which means you get a tighter turning circle. So I think the idea eventually will be to weld these brackets actually to the inside of the frame to just give me a little bit better turning circle there. But for now, I'm gonna chuck these G clamps on so I can stand back and have a look. Now this to me is looking great. Really like how this is coming together. Everything's gonna be moved around a bit, but I just want to get an idea if we're in the ballpark with the caster on this axle. It's supposed to be seven degrees, and people say you can put them up to like 10 degrees. It just helps it go down the road nice and straight. And at the moment we have got just over five degrees. So there's a little bit more adjustment there, but until this frame is sat down a bit, a bit of the weight of the engine, etc., on there, I don't wanna mess around with anything too much. My first time ever to build a hot rod car of any kind. Yeah, really pleased with the progress. It is sat really high though, and I don't know whether I need to take some springs out of this or not, just to get it sitting down, you know, quite a bit more. If you look where the bottom of the shock mount would be to the frame, it's quite a distance. And when you look at pictures of hot rods, this kind of setup, they, they normally have got quite short shocks. So it just sort of tells you how far away the frame is from the axle there. But before I go and rip springs out, I've got this massive heavy engine here, which is obviously not supported on the frame. So I think what I might do quickly is just try and get that with some temporary mounts just to sit on the frame and just see how much that pushes down on the springs, see if that gets me closer. So there's a bit of weight on the frame now just for the strap on the back of the engine. The rest of it's supported off the engine crane. I'll just put these blocks of wood in, so I'm gonna let it down, just let the frame take the weight. At the moment, that frame is about 500 mil, 20 inches. So let's just see when I let this weight down how much it comes down. So that is completely supported now on the frame. Yeah, it's come down about 40 mil, just under two inches. That's it for episode two of the budget V8 hot rod build. Super excited how the front suspension has turned out. Looks just better than I could have imagined and really excited to be moving on to the next stage. Thank you so much for watching your support. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button, buy merchandise, I'll put the link below. It will ship t-shirts, etc. anywhere around the world and that really supports the channel, thank you. And find us on Facebook and Instagram. We'll see you next time. Cheers.